Hello everybody and welcome to another chapter of Eric's Life, Our New Horizons. And this time we're visiting a few friends and their islands. And uh, in this Nintendo Switch title, Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can make your own virtual life. And it has been a wonderland for a lot of us. This is the third episode of the Animal Crossing New Horizons inspired uh, side series of the vlog. And here, first, we are visiting Lion Yu, which is uh, the island of one of my friends from middle school and high school. His name is Alec, and uh, it goes by Shades here in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So in his island, he's done a lot of different things, and we're going to be able to show off a few of those things uh, here today. So uh, he's managed to get a lot of his favorite villagers on his island, including his number one, Eugene, the koala bear. And then Apollo and Static are uh, filtering around as well. And uh, there's a few things that, that Alec does that I really, really love, and we're going to uh, focus on that a little bit more here as we, we go on. But as you can see, uh, SpongeBob and Patrick have, uh, you know, rest in peace, their souls on the beach there. They seem to have dried up. It's quite unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I always like that you can uh, really show off your fossils if you have extras in this entry in the Animal Crossing series. And he's doing that quite well. He's got a lot of his public works projects in a fair over here. We've got the teacup ride. We have uh, a dark blue kind of Godzilla statue. And uh, something Alec really likes to do, as you can see with that, uh, that sprite work of Sonic the Hedgehog, is uh, put custom designs around his town to really make it feel a, an immersive nerd haven, which it, which it very much is, and very much aligns with uh, his, uh, his favorite things in real life as well. So the name itself, Lion Yu, um, is Mandarin for purgatory. So there are some certain elements of Alex Island that kind of uh, really hone in on the uh, the purgatory aspect between heaven and hell, uh, the underworld and the uh, the sky world here. Um, but it's also uh, it's also called that in the uh, the Green Arrow TV show as well, which he is a fan of. And as you can see, he is a huge Super Mario 64 fan. Um, so if you're an avid Nintendo gamer, you probably recognize the paintings in front of the houses. We have Tiny Huge Island and Wet Dry World represented here, uh, as well as the portrait of Princess Peach. And I really freaking love that because you can basically, uh, using a website, replicate designs pretty much exactly as they are. And you know, they're just going to be pixelated. Obviously, the quality is not going to be the original form. Um, we got a, uh, a turf war going on uh, between gnomes and their, uh, their regions of their flowers over here, uh, which, is, which is really cute. Flowers are uh, more easy to grow, I would say, in this entry in the Animal Crossing series. But that being said, to, uh, to get a, a wide variety of every type of flower, and especially the different color variations, uh, definitely takes a lot of work. And we have more of these uh, custom designs here on their palettes. We've got Mario, Luigi, Sonic, Freddy Fazbear, and Pikachu. So as you guys can probably tell, Alec, Alec has worked very hard on this island, so I'm really excited and proud to be able to show it off. I got some really talented friends, and uh, to see them all play Animal Crossing is a really special thing. So here's where the theme of Purgatory kind of uh, gets uh, put in your face a little bit more with the graveyard. Um, I haven't even actually you know, seen any of these gravestones in my town, you know, available to buy or customize or anything. Um, but he's managed to get his hands on a lot of those. Um, but hey, you know, every good society needs a graveyard. That's just how popular Lion U is. People are going to die off eventually. And uh, the really large teddy bears are a nice touch. I actually found one myself and gave it to Colton uh, in our island of True North. If you guys haven't been watching our New Horizons, uh, we started off the series um, by showing off True North. Uh, back when Colton and I had finished the main campaign of Animal Crossing New Horizons, uh, it's definitely changed since then, but it's still uh, worth checking out as well. So Alex got a whole rock concert going on here. 
uh, with uh, stands and the whole concert venue. You have a guitar, a bass guitar, and a drum set and a microphone over here. So uh, I really like that you can uh, make your own space outdoors, which you really could never do before. In New Leaf, there are a few public works projects, but just being able to place any furniture item outside is super exciting. And who can resist having the telescope at the end of the cliff there? I think I've done it. I think uh, one of my friends that we're going to visit here soon has done it as well. It's kind of hard to resist. Mm -mm -mm. We have our lighthouse and a Statue of Liberty. Um, Alec did graduate in my class. I can't remember if he was on the class trip, but our class trip back in 2014 uh, was to New York City. So I've seen the Statue of Liberty up close, so now I can say I've seen it in Animal Crossing as well. I think that's a great white shark. And then we have a uh, kind of a workout beach going on over here uh, with the dumbbells and the barbells. And an elliptical machine and a pull-up bar. What's not to like? See, certainly a lot of villagers will be into that. Now here we have Jolly Roger Bay, which has some of the best music in video game history, uh, which I usually call the song Dire Dire Docks because the song plays in both Jolly Roger Bay and Dire Dire Docks levels of Mario 64. And we have the Tall Tall Mountain painting there as well. And uh, here we actually have Cherry living on his island, who is also a villager on True North for a while. So the fact that she's asking how True, True North is is kind of uh, kind of spooky. Hey, maybe she, maybe she moved uh, from our True North into his. Uh, that actually can happen. That's actually not the case um, for Alec. Um, but he's he's living it up. He's got gold roses. He's just made of pure gold. Got money trees, an outdoor pool. You can really live it up in Animal Crossing. Especially if you can pay off all your bills and all your loans and you basically get to be your own manager here. So Alec has really gone out with his house. Uh, you can see the uh, the four elements, the four nations in Avatar, The Last Airbender, and The Legend of Korra are up on his wall. We got Deadpool representation. Uh, we have uh, a gold Happy Home Academy award, which uh, I think I've gotten bronze and silver, but I don't think I have gold quite yet. Uh, we have a Starry Night here. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is being played on the computer. Hopefully that's not haunted. And this is his bedroom here in the back. On the wall you can see he's got uh, various designs. Uh, the two album covers on the, the north wall are uh, Welcome to My Nightmare Parts 1 and 2 by Alice Cooper. And then uh, some of his favorite Pokemon here on the east wall. I believe that's uh, Electabuzz and Magmar. You would think my Gen 1 knowledge would be good enough to know that for sure. And hey, maybe I'm right actually. And then we kind of have a cafe scenario going on over here. And the whole, this whole wallpaper is really interesting. It's like, uh, it's really feeling, uh, feeling up the 80s there. You have some nostalgic stuff. And uh, I like how this kind of just feels like a cafe. He's the same dark chocolate uh, birthday cake that I have as well, which I, I do appreciate. But the, the cohesion of the colors, the red and the gold color scheme, I really enjoy here. And then, so that was his east room, is the kitchen, and to the west we have his bathroom. So we have a lot going on here. I think that's um, maybe a gold arowana fish. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but when you have a good gold toilet to poop in, then you know you're really living it up. So yeah, soak in that, that cherry blossom bonsai goodness. I did forget to mention, because there's a lot to, to go over in Alex's room. Um, he is an electrician um, by trade. That's what he enjoys doing. And there are some circuit boards and other materials like that to kind of show off his personality. And that's the beautiful thing about Animal Crossing, is you can really do that in a whole uh, different assortment of ways. And you best wash your hands, especially in today's climate, after you go to the bathroom. And then the villager design is uh, meant to be a mirror uh, that you can look into. And uh, here we have his upstairs, which is heaven. So we have the whole astral plane, uh, the lights that uh, are actually based um, 
on that Japanese candy, I can't remember the name quite, um, but it's also uh, the inspiration for uh, Star Bits and Super Mario Galaxy and Gratitude Crystals in The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. But I love the minimalist uh, astral look that we got upstairs. But in the basement, we are in hell. So we have another uh, kaiju uh, monster statue. We have some skull radios and a skeleton. And the music is definitely the most unsettling song in the Animal Crossing series. And then over here on the wall, I guess we have uh, the victims of the depths of hell, which is, which is kind of unsettling because Tia is our girl. She she is a resident of True North, so I'm I'm kind of concerned. I have uh, I've expressed my concern to uh, resident services at Lion U. So hopefully, hopefully my my concerns get answered because uh, Tia can't go missing like that. But there are little things that uh, that Alec did that really shows off just how far you can push uh, custom designs in this game. Like uh, in his uh, pet bed uh, next to his uh, his bed in his bedroom, uh, he has uh, basically a design of what his dog in real life looks like as well. And I'm showing you guys through uh, the residence in his town. He's got a good eclectic uh, assortment of them. Oh, here we go, Bob on Battlefield and uh, Lethal Lava Land. And really, I just find it uh, really impressive that you can just uh, almost make the 8-bit Pac-Man maze look exact, especially on that, that custom awning there. But yeah, you've pretty much got every Super Mario 64 painting represented on his island. You have Bowser, uh, you have uh, Snowman's Land, you have Womp's Fortress. Uh, don't think there's anything missing in, in terms of the paintings. Because there are 15 levels in Super Mario 64, but not every level has a painting, maybe about half. So I think Alex all covered. He's got a nice fountain going on here. Uh, Leaf is visiting. He uh, debuted in Animal Crossing uh, New Leaf. This arcade machine, I know Lion used all about video games, but it was just too rich for my blood uh, at the time. But I could do, uh, do good to learn myself a little thing or two about cylinders. So I'm going to do that. Time for a good purchase. And there's SpongeBob and Patrick Star once again. And Alex got some custom outfits to show us as well. He's really good done a good job of putting those together and the, the magic wand item is a really nice way to uh, to show people your wackiest outfits on the go. Ah, the Katsune mask. Definitely a favorite, and his pirate outfit is representative of Luffy from One Piece. So thank you, Alec, uh, for being uh, one of the best islands that I've ever seen, and uh, for being on the show. It is awesome uh, to show off other people's islands. And uh, now we're going on to uh, the second uh, friend here today. We are visiting I Am an Isle, and that is the island of two friends of mine, uh, Becca and James. And uh, Becca is a college friend. She appeared in the vlog uh, quite a few times. Uh, her, me, and Brandon were all really good friends at Clarion University. And uh, James is her fiance. And uh, I have become more acquainted with James over the past uh, year, especially. Um, we visited them uh, back in December before the end times that we're in now. And, uh, and they got engaged about six months ago, and Colton and I got engaged uh, a few weeks ago. So we're, we're on similar trajectories. Uh, so this is a really good friendship, and actually the second day Animal Crossing New Horizons was out, like the first full day, I suppose, because uh, we played launch night March 20th, but on March 21st, I spent a lot of time here at I Am an Isle, um, but obviously it just looked like wilderness, and now it's fully landscaped, you have brick pathways, uh, you have all of your villagers' houses lined neatly up, um, apparently this villager does not deserve part of the brick pathway, which I thought was quite discriminatory, uh, but we're about to find out why. 
That's because he has three race car beds, and that's probably a little bit of a little bit of overkill. It's Tom, Tom the cat, Tom cat. I wonder if uh, Tom is jealous. Maybe it's a little bit of copyright infringement here. Not too sure. So we're going to continue uh, looking through their island. Uh, so James is the one who's really been playing Animal Crossing New Horizons consistently. Uh, we'll see just how much Becca has actually been up to in Animal Crossing in a few moments. Um, but I really love their town flag because that is their pet rabbit. The rabbit's name is Pumpkin, and I've had the pleasure of meeting Pumpkin a few times as well. Pumpkin is adorable. So what better flag could you possibly want? Sherb, stop trying to take the spotlight away from Pumpkin it is very disrespectful. Now Kix, if Kix wants to take the spotlight away, that's fine, because Kix, Kix is handsome, so he's allowed to do stuff like that. I love the terracotta pathway, it's one of my favorite pathways. It, it might be the old uh, grandma pathway, but you know what, I'm fine with it. Also I love rainy days in Animal Crossing, just like I do in real life, uh, so as you can see, uh, James has a runny nose, and I have been sneezing out the wazoo. We might be spreading around the coronavirus a little bit too much in I Am an Isle. And uh, I Am an Isle is just a goofy, goofy ass name. Basically, I think Becca named her character I Am an Acorn. Again, I'm not fully certain why, but here we have Becca's residence, and it is still a tent on the beach. Uh, she does have very pristine beachfront property, and that's good resale value. Uh, but this tent is the first time I've actually seen cockroaches in New Horizons because Colton and I have been playing so much I actually haven't seen it in my game. But I did her a huge favor and I stomped all of those cockroaches out. I feel so much better now. So yeah, Beck, I'm not very proud of you. You're going to have to get back in on uh, the Animal Crossing train and at least upgrade to a house. James has been your sugar daddy getting you a model ladybug and a few other things, plants, that's pretty much all you need. You don't really need the, the life necessities to, uh, to have a good one in Animal Crossing. And here we have an actual Boomer. This is Boomer the Penguin. I think he's lost. He may have crash landed here. Oh, you're Lee. I heard you were visiting. I'm Boomer. This island is the best human, so enjoy your stay here. Oh, penguin. I feel like that's a, it's a little bit specious, but Boomer is old. We have to forgive him. He's, he's not like the rest of us. So we have some interesting villagers at I Am an Isle. We have Chatter, the mouse made seemingly of cheddar cheese, uh, and Muffy. Muffy is absolutely James's favorite villager. He's, uh, he's in love with her deeply, actually. And uh, they've done basically what we have as well on True North. Uh, theirs is a little bit more organized, where they have um, separated their orchards by variety of fruit, which I think is a nice way to, to do it, especially if you uh, are harvesting them all at once to go sell them, make a, a few thousand bells. And... Uh, You'll see that I dug up a fossils because at this point in the game I was desperate for the final fossil I needed in my collection at True North. Um, I got all of them except for one, and then for three weeks in June, I was basically, basically the entire month of June actually, now that I think about it, I was looking for the final fossil. It was the skull, the front end of the Pachycephalosaurus, and I just couldn't find it and Blathers just wouldn't give me what I wanted, he wouldn't, the fossils were wrong. So I was desperate. So I was trying to dig up some of the other fossils and the other towns that I visited. Um, hopefully you guys aren't looking at the dates too much because uh, as you'll notice, it does take me a month to actually get around to finishing the production on these videos from when I visit. I visited Alec on June 15th and I visited James and Becca on June 25th. So now we're over at Goldie's house, and uh, James is, I think, in love. I'm not sure how Becca feels about that. There is some, uh, maybe some marital discourse that needs to go on over there. 
Um, but we actually had a lot of fun when we visited uh, James and Becca because I actually guest starred on their Twitch stream. So James is Fly Psy Guy. Um, so he's named that in Animal Crossing, but he's also that on Twitch. Um, and he streams various games, including Animal Crossing New Horizons. So if you guys want to check him out, I'll link uh, their profile in the description below. And you can also see the archived uh, footage of when I uh, did visit and all the live audio and commentary that happened then as well because that was a lot of fun it was about a about a two hour visit because i visited them for about an hour and then uh, as you'll see very briefly uh, they came over to true north as well so i'm trying out some new clothes I, it's really good excuse to do that if you're at somebody's town visiting online anyway they're always going to have a different assortment of stuff to buy and wear because obviously the crimson red fedora goes with the space parka super well. Speaking of space parkas, uh, James designed his own. It's kind of the, the solar system. Uh, it's color coded, so you got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and then the asteroid belt, and then Jupiter with its giant sunspot, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Uh, so that's what all those colors mean. And we have a, a Spyro sweatshirt, I believe, as well. But I really thought the solar system one was cute. We got the, the mothers ordering us nine, well, it used to be nine pizzas, but screw Pluto, so, you know, sorry, Pluto. So, yeah, we're just kind of uh, exploring the wilderness a little bit more here, and James is about to take me to his house. He's got a little bit more going on than Becca does, and uh, Becca needs to, like, own online membership, and since he doesn't play very often... Um, that's why we're not visiting and seeing her character in the digital flesh here. Um, but just trust us, she's alive, she exists. This is where she calls home as well. I like it that both Becca and James and Colton and I um, are basically treating Animal Crossing as this kind of uh, couple experience where, you know, you could have your own separate islands on your separate Switch platforms, uh, like Colton and I certainly could. But we just thought it would be a lot more fun to do it together and, and build up our own island as like a cooperative experience. So, without further ado, we're going to head into James's house here. And uh, he's got a nice decor. It's, it's kind of more realistic. It feels very lived in. Um, it's got uh, a really nice uh, maroon wall with kind of like some sort of glitter effect going on. Um, and you know what? I can see that their house in real life will end up looking just like this. Hopefully they keep the cardboard boxes around forever. Because that, that really pulls the, uh, the house together, in my opinion. But I do like the warm colors. Uh, the gray tile and the, the soft woods complement the red very nicely. And you can tell they are learned people because they have a world map and a globe in the same room. And I sneeze into his plant because, you know, what else are you going to do when you are visiting a friend? The bathroom's really nice. Uh, I feel like this is just your standard bathroom. You have a toilet, you have a bidet, and you need to have both, especially in Animal Crossing. You have a tub, a sink, and a scale to weigh yourself. Fun fact, you can actually exit fruit from your body if you sit on a toilet in this game, which is probably the greatest innovation the Animal Crossing series has seen yet. Also, before now, I had never seen a pink refrigerator, so props for that. I wonder what's inside. Like seemingly every Animal Crossing villager, James keeps his formal wear in the fridge. Well, it's time to uh, sit down to dinner of our uh, spice rack and tea set. There's no main course, just spices and tea, or spice tea. Maybe that's what we're going for here. Not entirely certain. And something else new that I found out, you find out something new every single time you play Animal Crossing, is that you can actually throw stuff away, which uh, I think you could do maybe in past games, but I had just uh, not considered it and totally forgotten about it. And yes, that is something that you can do if you just want to get rid of something as well. Uh, so their basement feels very, very realistic. It's where you keep all your boxes um, and maybe your whiteboard and things that are too big to fit in any other room in your house. 
I mean, they're they're of scholarly minds after all. They have to keep up to date with their brains. That's what the whiteboard is for. But serious talk, uh, James, uh, part of what he does is he uh, gives um, tours uh, in the uh, the Stars Over Clarion, uh, which is basically you go up in the planetarium and you learn about uh, anything from constellations to general astronomy. And uh, they're actually doing a project that is basically that, but digital, and you can explore it from the comfort of your home, which has given people uh, something to do, you know, and that's really important in this day and age. You can't play Animal Crossing the entire time. And then on their bulletin board, you can actually customize you know, one of the photos on the bulletin board. And that is a picture of Becca from real life in Animal Crossing. And the solid gold engagement ring is right there to boot. But yeah, I like the, the accents that uh, the models of the sea butterfly and the honeybee give off. That's super nice. And uh, yeah, it just feels like an actual attempt at maybe replicating what an actual bedroom would look like, what an actual basement, living room, and so forth, um, which is great because this episode really shows off that you could go one way or another. You could do either extreme or somewhere in the middle where Alec was basically putting as much references, as much like um, you know, crazy creative talent into his every room and then, uh, you know, James is absolutely designing it very well here, too. Um, maybe not so much the upstairs. I think that's still a work in progress. Um, but the point of that is that, you know, it's totally okay to design your house in Animal Crossing as if it was more realistic. Or you can go bonkers and, uh, and really have something uh, to have fun with. And I, I kind of try to do both, depending on my room. Uh, at True North. I like to shake things up a little bit. This is Muffy. Hey, Nightshade. I do like her catchphrase. You're visiting Fly Sci Guy, right? Check out their title. It's Total Trash. So, full transparency, James actually uh, hates Muffy, and so Muffy called him Total Trash. It's, you know, eye for an eye. And we're picking up a ride on Dodo Airlines to go back to our home of True North. So now that we've seen Alec, James, and Becca's residences and seen what they've uh, done with their islands, we are back home and I wanted to show you guys a few things for this uh, third act of the video here. Um, so we had a campsite uh, visitor that day, Tad the Frog, and I got really lucky and I won two of these games in a row. So I had a one out of four chance for this one. I got it correct, it was the spade, so uh, he's going to give me uh, a prize here, and I got some goggles. Alright, Lee, go hit the showers. Slurp! I don't know if I want to be slurped in the showers, Tad. But I had a 50-50 chance of getting this right, and I got a much better prize, the meme shirt. And before this moment, I don't think I knew that the meme shirt existed because I felt surprised that it was literally just a, a fairly photorealistic cat shooting lasers in space. And uh, the, the cosmic background can be different colors from what I understand. I got the red version. So, so while James was visiting, I got my very own meme shirt. I don't think there's a more valuable article of clothing in the game. I mean, you have the 1.2 million bell crown, or you can have the meme shirt, which is probably like 500 bells, but it's, it's design that really counts here. Thank you, Nintendo. This is Mo the Cat, so he is one of our new villagers at True North. Uh, we've had a couple people move in and out because we, uh, we like to keep things fresh, but serious... Uh, my boyfriend, Colton, uh, boyfriend, fiance, still not used to that. He recruited Mo from an island. Um, so it's nice to have uh, a cat around. Uh, we actually have another cat around, but I'm going to reveal who that is later in this video. So you better stay tuned. Uh, there was a bug off recently in June. So this is a little bit of what that looks like. I'm all decked up in my Cub Scout uniform. I have all the Scout uniforms. I'm actually dressed up that way for a very specific reason, which I'm about to show you 
right now. But first, I am about to pay off my final loan in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I just had 100,000 bells left when I recorded this clip, and I figured, you know what, why not throw that in as a little bit of a bragging right to say that, sweet, I finally finished paying off my very last home loan. Feels really good. It, it literally basically doesn't even earn you anything. You get like free customizations for your house from Tom Nook, but otherwise it's just to say that you did it. But what we're really here to do at True North this time is to visit the museum, walk past the sleeping blathers to the fossil section of the museum, and I'm going to give you a tour of the full fossil selection in Animal Crossing New Horizons. We have captured and dug up all of these fossils, so I'm going to give you a nice slow walkthrough of what all of these look like to find out all the details about them and their names you guys might have to find them yourself but uh just to show off the the very uh highly technical models of all of these fossils i thought was going to be very interesting let's see if i can pronounce these the omphalosaurus that's the plesiosaurus the archelon that first one was hard so we're just going to pretend i didn't even try the Quizzlecoatless and the Pterodon. Good old Silent Peas. Can't forget about the Silent Peas. I like the uh, more dynamic style that they've done with the museum in this game. Kind of like how the branching evolutionary paths show off uh, where things connect. Like the Diplodocus connects to the, not the Brachiosaurus, but the Brachiosaurus is beautiful. Over here we have the Demetrodon and the Jeremiah. So come on fellow Cub Scouts, it's like I'm taking all the, the scouts in the world on a little museum tour here. This is educational. Don't let anybody say that Animal Crossing is not educational. The Stegosaurus, goddamn beautiful dinosaur, and the Ankylosaurus. And over here we have the Iguanodon and the Parasaurolophus, Parasaurolophus, blech. And so at this point in time, I hadn't finished the Pachycephalosaurus, but cue a few days later, July 3rd, even in my wetsuit, uh, that was the same day I actually found it for myself, we got the skull of the Pachycephalosaurus, and then we have the Triceratops there. So now the museum is complete, you can see it for yourself. It just wasn't when I uh, did all these other tours here as well. So the Spinosaurus, the T-Rex, all looking good. So yeah, it feels really good to have every fossil. Because it's going to take a long time to get every bug, fish, sea creature, and painting and work of art. Um, but fossils is usually what you complete first. Was that the Di Dinosaurus? I don't know. But I have them. They're in my museum. Blathers has assessed them. They are good to go. They're stable fossils and they're looking good. We have the mammoth and the saber toothed tiger. The megaserops and the megaloceros. Big deer. And the australopith, which is an ancestor of the human. It, it looks more human-like, but they just have like the top half, top jaw of the skull here. Because I guess they didn't want to creep you out too much. But I like how they can show that the, uh, the ancestors of some of these animals relate to the villagers that are in the Animal Crossing series in general. And like I said, ancestor of the human, right there. So we recently had a new update in Animal Crossing New Horizons on July 3rd. It introduced swimming and diving back into the series. It was first introduced in Animal Crossing New Leaf. And now we can just swim in the oceans right around our island, right with all the sharks and everything. And we can uh, give seashells, uh, I believe they're, um, what are they? Scallops to Pascal, the otter. Bum 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 b
And here is Blathers just telling me how magnificent I am for furthering the cultural development of True North and getting every fossil in the game. And here I am donating that, that final fossil that I showed earlier in the tour. Could it be? It is Apache Skull. Does this mean? Yes, it is done. The Apache Cephalosaurus is complete. You have no idea how excited I was to hear those words finally uttered by this damn owl. Ah, oh, it took forever. At this time, we are pretty close to 200 hours each in Animal Crossing New Horizons, Colton and I. Apache, uh, the Apache, we'll just call him Patchy. Not the brightest dinosaur. His skull is so darn thick that uh, there's not that much room for a brain, unfortunately. Is it true the final fossil has been found? Hoo hoo! It has, it has, indeed, huzzah! Ali, before you took up the task, ours was but a bare bones collection. A bit of museum humor for you there. <clears throat> yes, that is to say, thank you for your commitment to collecting and donating fossils. Our humble museum's reputation is in your hands forever. You are the hand of legacy, dear resident representative. Really quick, I just wanted to show my updated living room. I have uh, upgraded from a, a wood floor and a blue wall to this kind of misty garden look, and uh, I thought that would uh, put me at ease for the summer months here. And uh, Colton has been working on his front yard and making a, uh, a spring and a little mountain next to his house. This is not the final product. We'll probably show off more of what that looks like in a later episode this year. Um, but yeah, we've still been making progress on how things look at True North. And it's looking good. Glad to see you, S-Bud. Please, come with me. So, like Tia did for me, Tia also hosted Colton's birthday party in Animal Crossing. And his birthday was on July 11th. So, I figured, why not throw that in uh, this video as well? We can get a lot of mileage out of this and wish Colton more happy birthday wishes. So, at my party, we had Tia and Curlos as well, and I had Kyle, and Colton has Rolf, which is also one of our favorite villagers. The little, little snow tiger, he's a, he's a cranky fella. I love him, he's so darn precious. Also, I find it funny that they caught Colton in his wetsuit. So that's how he gets to spend his birthday, all moist and rubbery. I thought we'd never get to you opening your birthday gift. And I believe you got a birthday hat out of this party. So uh, you might get different things on your birthday from year to year in this game. But it's not about the presents, it's about the camaraderie here. So we're going to get you into place to bash that pinata. Just like I did in the last episode, we celebrated my birthday in the second episode of Our New Horizons. And uh, Ryan and Brandon came over digitally and celebrated that as well. It was a lot of fun. That's right. Hit it. Smack it around. See, there's something so beautiful about that that I just couldn't interrupt. Also, to see an animal like Rolf prance around gives us untold amounts of joy. They're having a great time. So now that we've shown you Colton's birthday and uh, Lion, you, I am an Isle, and our fossil collection in full, we wanted to show you some other random assortment of clips from our, uh, our adventures in the past couple months. Bo and Rolf being cute. Adi's talking about trains falling in love. 
It doesn't matter if Maglev Mike took their relationship off the rails. Because I'm building a thing. I don't know, I, I'm far more interested in the, uh, the train romance than whatever you're building, Audie. But seriously, Audie is great. We met her on an island and just happened to get her through uh, Nook Miles, which is great. And Colton did find a scorpion island, just luck of the draw on one of his visits across the ocean. So, as you can see here, he was in kind of a predicament. This is also where he uh, recruited Mo to live with us on True North. So yeah, that's a sting operation, alright. Even if you successfully catch one, another scorpion is right there to attack you after that animation is done. And it happened to Colton multiple times, including his net getting uh, destroyed to put some salt in the wound. So here's your montage of that. It's really good. And it's even clear this time. There's nothing to worry about anymore. All the scorpions are going to be on their lonesome, practically defenses against the might of Sirius. Except there's three over there, and then one that was hiding in the flowers. Hot dog. So this might be a preview of an episode to come. This is our good friend Amanda. Uh, it was a high school friend of hers and a college friend of hers. And uh, she got us Raymond. So basically, we beat the game, folks. We found Raymond. He is a resident of True North now. So really, what else is there to say? She was very generous to do that for us, um, but he was actually going to be moving out soon anyway, and she didn't really want or need Raymond around, so we have her Raymond. And, uh, and he was secretly hoping that we'd ask him to join us, and uh, here is the process of that. So Amanda's island is Rosewood, and we, uh, we might be visiting that in a future episode, because she has put a lot of time and energy in Animal Crossing New Horizons, so I think it would be a really cool idea to show off what she's got in the future. But yeah, so we have Adi and Raymond, two of the new villagers to the Animal Crossing series, and uh, they like to pal around quite a bit. Hey, what you up to, Crisp? Checking out my super cozy den chair, huh? Yep, I had it custom engineered to match every curve of my body. In layman's terms, it's like a cloud covering my butt. Ah, and Raymond is too bad at this video game space hammer blaster or whatever these animals are weird folks anyway we'll see you guys in the next episode thank you so much for watching